going to give you some type of protection or God's going to hear your prayers. You said it's for life, right? Read that. Proverbs 7 and 10. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2. Hey, come back, brother. Come back. Proverbs 7 and verse 2. Read. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. What does the Bible say? Keep my commandments and do what? Keep my commandments and live. So the Bible says to keep my commandments, right? And live. So what gives us life? The cross or the commandments? Now you have to prove to me in the Bible where does it say in the commandments to wear a cross? Or is there a commandment in the Bible that goes against graven images? Is there a scripture in the Bible that goes against graven images? There's not? Give me Exodus chapter 20. He says, because the cross is for life. A lot of Christians think that the Christian cross has power. What happened to the Christian the power that the cross had when the Europeans came to Africa and took your gold? Do you not pray? Do you not pray for the unification of Africa? Do you not pray for the wealth of Africa? Why have none of your prayers been heard? Because there's no power in the idol. That's right. There's no birth in the idol. That's the right. idol has no ears, neither does it have eyes, neither has a mouth to answer your prayer. But you have many people in Africa under the guise of Christianity praying to the cross, thinking that it has any type of power or life in it. Read that, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. So the Bible says, keep my commandments and live. Thou shalt have not unto thee no graven image. That's did a man take the image and did he fashion and graven it and put gold on it? Yes, he did. And he told you that that cross represents Christ. That cross will protect you. That cross will give you life. That cross is a representation of Jesus Christ. Where is that in the Bible? Who told you that? Who told you that cross had to do with Christ? How many other people was crucified on the cross? So everybody that died by a noose, everybody that died by a gun, everybody that got stabbed, are we going to wear that around that neck? It doesn't make sense. The cross was used for capital punishment in Rome. They crucified black people on the cross and they killed thousands of our ancestors and they gave you the cross and says, this represents Christ. They're mocking you. The same tool that they use to crucify our fathers is the same tool that they tell you to pray to. They're mocking black people because black people don't like to read. Black people will follow anything that the white man tells us when they can't prove it in a book. Read. read. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4. Read. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image huh? or any likeness of anything read. that is in the heaven above read. or that is in the earth beneath read. or that is in the waters under the earth. Read. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, Read. nor serve them. Read. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. So the Bible, so you give, give me Jeremiah 2 verse 27. The Bible says not to make thee, to, unto thee any graven images, not to bow down nor to serve. Now in a Christian church, do they do this? In a Christian church, do they do this? What does that mean? We're in the Bible that say to do that. So why do we do it? We do it because we're following false gods that was taught to us by slave masters. In order to keep the children of Israel in sin, to keep them on the bottom and to take their resources, what do they do? They teach you lies. They understand your connection to your God. They understand that your laws connect you to your Father. When you keep God's commandments, God will fight for us. But they understand also, when you don't keep God's commandments, when you follow the gods of the other nations and lies, God will fight against us. You understand that? You understand what I'm saying? You need me to translate it for you? You understand, right? Read that. Jeremiah 2 verse 27. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 27. Say this to a stock, thou art my father. So say to a stock, a stock is a piece of wood. Thou art my father. Because many people say to the cross, that's my father. This gives me protection. Because the father is supposed to protect his child, right? Many people think that the cross is going to protect them from danger. That's going to protect them from diseases. That's going to protect them from the white man. But has the cross protect us? No. The same people that enslaved us, that raped their ancestors, that take their resources, is the same person that gave you that cross. That cross is an image or symbol of oppression. It's not a symbol of God or protection. Read. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 27. Uh -huh. Saying to a star, thou art my father, uh -huh. and to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. Read. For they have turned their backs unto me. Read it again. 
Wait, wait for the brother because he's on the phone right now. That's what Satan does when we go over the commandments of God. Hold up, read it again for the brother. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 27. Huh? Saying to a stop, thou art my father, and to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. Read. For they have turned their backs unto me. What did God say? You have done what? They have turned their backs unto me. But we have turned our backs unto God. Where can we find the thoughts in the Bible? Let God be true in every man alive. If it's not in the Bible, why do you have it on right now? Why do you have it on right now if it's not in the Bible? Give me Psalm 115 verse 4. What should you do if that's not in the Bible? The Bible says thou shalt not worship false gods. That's what I make it to the any graven images. And you have a graven images on your neck that doesn't represent God, that cannot save black people in Africa. Images, and they painted their images over us. Now you worship a white image. What is this? What is this foolishness? What is this? What is this? Anybody tell me what this is? Those Jewish people who call themselves Jews, 
they're not the Jews of the Bible. I'm looking at the Jews. That's right. Read it again. It's the wrong me. It's the 28, the 50. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee. What did the Bible say? Curses will come upon the Israelites for not doing what? Obeying his commandments. Obeying his commandments. Remember, God delivered the Israelites out of the mightiest empire on earth by the ancient Egyptians. And he made a fair show to the Egyptian Pharaoh. He destroyed Egypt. And he delivered us and he gave us what? Laws, statutes, and commandments. We had a culture. We had dietary laws. We had ceremony laws until the holidays what we're supposed to celebrate. But today, you celebrate Christmas, you celebrate New Year's on January 1st, you celebrate your birthdays, you celebrate Easter, you celebrate all these false pagan customs, but not one of them is in the Bible. Right. Prove to me, which one of those holidays you go to church and you celebrate is in the Bible? No, you celebrate the religions of your oppressors. You celebrate the customs of your slave masters. And you ask your slave masters for foreign aid. But what about, what about the one true God of the Bible? God says to what? Keep my commandments and I'll bless you, right? Yeah. Read verse 33. God said, Africa being the wealthiest country is the poorest country. Read. Did you read me? It's the 28 verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. You hear that, brother? You hear that? Read it again. Chapter G. Want something? Chapter G. Read it again. Did you read me? It's the 28 verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. So the Bible says, the fruit of thy land. What is the fruit from the, of your land? The fruit goes to your resources. Right. The fruit goes into your natural resources. That's right. Your diamond, your gold, your bauxite, your ruby, your iridium. The fruit of your land goes into the wealth of the land. Read it again. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors, the fruit of thy land, your resources, your gold, your diamonds of the land, the wealth of the land, read. And all thy labors. And all thy labors. Africa is supposed to be the wealthiest country by the labors of your own hand. You're supposed to collect the fruit of your land. You're supposed to be collecting the gold. Why is it called the Ivory Coast or the Gold Coast of Ghana? <laughs> Ghana is supposed to be the richest, wealthiest country in the world. And you're supposed to do the labor of that. Read on. Nation is you. And finally, my brother, be strong.